Hello geometry students and welcome to a geometric CUDA worksheet tutorial. We're doing all the transformations today. This is going to be a shorter video, not, not a shorter video, it's not going to be as long as it should be just because we've talked about all these different types of transformations before, rotations, reflections, and trans translations. So if you want more in depth, make sure you check out each one of those videos uh, to get a step-by-step -step process and how to do this. So I'm going to do this rather quickly um, and I already have some of it filled in just to assist me in that. So we, first we have a rotation 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin. So we need to keep in mind that we are rotating this entire shape about the origin here. I always like to put a star or a circle, something uh, where we're rotating our shape around. Okay, this is the original shape that we're rotating, but again, we only care about the vertices. So we only care about the Z, this J, and the L as we rotate our shape. Now what I've already done here is I'm gonna kind of point it out with the laser pointer. I've drawn these lines that are consisting of vertical or horizontal lines to directly connect each vertex with the origin. So Z has this line of four right here, this dotted line of four. J has this, uh, well, let me go to L first. L has this dotted line of three, this purple one. And then J, you can't draw a direct line to the origin there because it's easier to rotate when we use vertical and horizontal lines, not diagonal ones, okay? So we went up to and to the right five. So the first thing is drawing what I call supports into our shape so that it assists us with the rotation. Okay, so the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna take each one of these lines and we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees visually, okay? So visually rotating each one 90 degrees counterclockwise. So this green line of four rotates 90 degrees and when you rotate it 90 degrees, it goes from left to pointing down. So the new point for Z is gonna be here. And we're gonna call that, we'll use this uh, color. We're gonna call that Z prime. So that's the new location of Z because we rotated four units down from four units left. All right, next up we have L. L, we did the same thing, here's L. And then it's three units from the origin. So as we rotate at 90 degrees right here, we get to this new spot right here. So this is gonna be L prime, okay? And then finally we have J. J is the complicated one where you have this L support here. And we need to just worry about rotating the five and then keeping this attached. This is always a tricky one because it's tough for people to visualize. Just imagine that this is a wheel and the um, the support, the thing, the spoke of the wheel that's touching is the thing that you worry about rotating. So as we rotate this five down, it gets here. And this five, again, has this two attached to it, sticking out downwards. So as it swings downwards, it's, now it's gonna be sticking out to the right. So our new spot for J is going to be here. This is gonna be called uh, J prime. Now, once we're done rotating all these different shapes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect them together. Uh, sorry, rotating these vertices. We're gonna connect them together, and there is our transformed shape under a rotation of 90 degrees counterclockwise. Moving on to the next one is the translation. Translations, in my opinion, are the easiest. We simply need to follow instructions. So four units right, one unit down. So I've already drawn four units to the right. We're concentrating on each vertex separately. Four units to the right, one unit down. And then we repeat this process for each one of these. So I'm gonna repeat this process for F. I'm gonna repeat this process for Y. And I'm gonna make new dots for the new locations. So here we have Y prime, make sure to label each one, G prime, and F prime. Now if I'm going too fast, make sure to pause this video at any time so you can copy it down. That would be helpful. I also have a strategy that I've talked about where you just rotate one of the shapes or one of the points uh, copy this down if you guys want, okay? But I, I do a strategy where I just rotate one of the verti uh, vertices. So for example, F. And then what I do is I just redraw the shape. So I know Y is one, two, three units down for, from, uh, from F prime. And then I know that uh, Y t is one and one away from G. So I'm gonna go one, one away from G. So then I connect it right here and I have the shape also here. So there's two different ways to do that. Um, I students like both equally well, so just keep that in mind. 
Translation one, uh, one up and one to the right. So we're just going to move all these points one over and one over. This one would probably be easier just to count each one up because it's a small translation. So it's going to look something like this. Don't forget to label it when you're done. So we have E prime, J prime, T prime, and M prime. Reflection. Uh, reflections are cool. First, you need to identify the line of reflection. I've already highlighted it. It's the x-axis. The x-axis is also known as y equals zero. So don't be confused. Don't call it x equals zero. x equals zero is the y-axis, a vertical line, okay? Now, what we do with reflections is we simply count to the line of reflection from each vertex. So if I start at m, I need to count up because that's where the line of reflection is. It's two units up. So if it's two units of line of reflection, I reflect, I mirror image on the other side. So I'm gonna do two units up and I arrive at my point, which I'm gonna call M prime. I do the same thing with C. Now C is different though, because it's on the other side of the line of reflection. That's okay. I need to still count to the line of reflection. If I have to go down or up, left or right, I always count to the line of reflection and then I mirror, imi mirror image on the other side and that's C prime right there. J, we're gonna do the same thing. It's gonna be the same distance away, one and one. So that's gonna be my J prime. And then K is one, one, two, three, four units to the line of reflection. So I got one, two, three, four up there. This is where my K prime is. And then I simply connect my dots when I'm done. This is the best part. I used to have those uh, connect the dot books as a kid and those are really fun. So that's what we're doing here. And we can tell just visually that we have a nice mirror image going on uh, with this new shape that we've drawn right here. So you can kind of see that it is definitely the mirror image of the other one. Now we're writing rules, okay? Writing rules, so we're going in reverse. What happened between these two? Now, this is important to identify, is it a shift or a slide? Is it a mirror image or is it facing a new direction? Because each one of these is a different type of uh, transformation. The first one clearly is a shift. It keeps its same orientation, okay? It's just moved over. So this is definitely a translation. So we need to figure out which uh, what type of transformation or translation it is. How much did it move over? Well, only H only moved over to one unit in the positive X direction. B moved only one unit and C only moved one unit. That's another way to indicate um, if it's a translation is each vertex moves the same distance. So each vertex moves the same distance. Uh, each vertex moves equal distance, how about that, shorthand. Okay, so this is just uh, x plus one, y plus zero. Another way to write this in uh, actual notation would be one comma zero with the little bracket here, and that would be hbc equals h prime, b prime, c prime. And that's our translation rule. Moving on to this one, this one does not look like it maintained its direction. It's not in the same direction. It's facing a new direction, but is it a mirror image? Yes, it is a mirror image, so it's definitely gonna be a reflection. Now, I've already drawn here this. The trick to doing reflections and knowing what the rule is, is we wanna know the distance between corresponding vertices. So here we're looking at the Ds. We have a D here, D prime here. What is the distance in between those two? Well, that distance we can count, and it's one, two, three, four. So the total distance is four. Now we know that mirror images, that reflections, maintain distance away from each other. It's equidistant. Both these points are the same distance away from the line of reflection. So we just need to count half the distance it is from each other. So one, two is half of four, one, two, and this is a point on our line of reflection. We can repeat this process to find another point of our line of reflection. So down here we have I, and I've already said that we need to count that distance. That distance is two, so we're gonna count half of that to arrive at our line of reflection, because uh, the line of reflection is a midpoint between the distance of the vertices. So we can draw our line in here, now that we have two dots of our line of reflection, and that is our line of reflection. Now we need to come up with the equation of this. 
since it's a vertical line, it's going to be in the form of x equals a number. Uh, horizontal lines are in the form of y equals a number. So it's vertical, so we know we have x equals a number. So it's going to be a rotation. Sorry, reflection. Big R for reflection. Um, it's going to be, let's see here. Uh, we're going to put, now this is where we have our x equals a number. What is the value of x? We have 1, 2, 3. So we have x equals 3. We put our rule there, x equals 3. And then the shape that we're reflecting. So D, E, I, P. And then this is going to be equal to the image. This is the pre-image. D prime, uh, E prime, I prime, P prime. And I, I don't, ran out of room somehow, but that is how we write our reflection rule. This one is the same thing. We can tell it's a mirror image. It's facing a new direction, but it's definitely a mirror image. So we count the distance. This total distance was six. So now we're just looking for half that distance and that is three. So we're gonna count down three. One, two, three. Same thing from F, one, two, three. So we arrive at our, uh, what do you call it? Our line of reflection point right there. We need a second point. Anywhere we see that the two corresponding points, E and E prime, are in the same spot, we don't have to count the distance. We know that's going to be on the line of reflection. So this is what our line looks like. So we can either say this is the x-axis reflecting over the x-axis or that it is y equals 0. Those are both the same thing. So these are equal. So we can say it's a rotation over y equals 0 of R, F, I, E, okay? And then you know the rest. We'd put it equal to the uh, new image. Now this one, look how it's facing a new direction and it's not a mirror image. A mirror image would look something like this. And barring a compound transformation, another mirror image would look something like this, okay? But that's not how it is. This is definitely a ro uh, rotation. This is a rotation of how many degrees? Well, 90 degrees, think about this. Each time we move a quadrant over, that's 90 degrees. So 90 degrees. How many quadrants did we move over here? We move over one. This would be one quadrant over. This is two quadrant overs. So that would be 180 degrees. So this is a rotation of 180 degrees. And this is counterclockwise. Okay, when it's counterclockwise, that is in the positive direction. So this would be rotation 180 degrees of x, b, g, and this is equal to x prime, g prime, or b prime, sorry, g prime. So little r for rotation, 180 degrees, it's positive. Okay, so 180, and that is our rotation rule. This last part here, we have a couple more to do. I'm going to skip those two just because it's a lot of drawing and we've already done problems like that. Rotation, 180 degrees. Find the coordinates. This time we don't have a picture. We can use the rule here. I normally don't like the table of rules if we have like 90 degrees and we have our X and Y, 180, whatever. But in this case, because it's 180, that one's pretty easy to remember. We just make our X and Y negative. So we're going to take each one of these points for our E prime and make it green. So it stands out a little bit more. So E prime, we're just going to make our X negative and then negative Y. So if it's already negative, that becomes positive. So that's our new point there. J prime, both are positive, so they're both become negative. R prime, same deal. Make them both negative. And then S prime, negative 5, comma, negative 2. And these are the new vertices for that transformation. Last one, translation. If it's seven units to the right, one unit down. Anytime we move uh, in the direction right or left, we're talking about x. And then it's positive if it moves to the right, and it's negative if it moves to the left. If we're talking about y distances, y movements, that's vertical. So we have vertical up and down. This would be positive, and this would be negative. So here we're moving down, so that's negative. And then here we're moving to the right, so that would be positive. So we need to add 7 and subtract 1 to find our new coordinates. Let's go ahead and do that. So we have j prime would be negative 3 plus 7, and then 1 minus, whoops, 
1 minus 1. For f prime, we would have negative 2 plus 7. You can see the pattern here, 3 minus 1. And then n prime, we would have negative 2 plus 7 and 0 minus 1. Okay, just to highlight it even more so it's super clear, we have the 7 here is an x, x, x. And then we have our y value here, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. Let's go ahead and write the final coordinates. So j prime is going to be 4, comma, 0. f prime is going to be 5, comma, 2. And then n prime is going to be 5, comma, negative 1. And that's it. That's every transformation except dilations. I'll make a separate video for that. Make sure to stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, go back and rewind, pause, whatever you need. This video is for you. Leave a comment if you need something covered. And I look forward to seeing you next time on West Explains Best.